Welcome to Academic Gain Tutorials. In this lecture, we will dive into the details of Six Sigma. We will focus on and understand what is Six Sigma, history of Six Sigma, milestones of Six Sigma, core benefits of Six Sigma implementation. What is the concept of Six Sigma? What are the Six Sigma principles? Why is it called Six Sigma? Meaning of Six Sigma with examples, and with Six Sigma, how good is good enough? And finally, we shall have a discussion on Three Sigma versus Six Sigma processes. To begin with, what is Six Sigma? Sigma is the Greek letter representing a statistical unit of measurement that defines the standard deviation of a population. Six refers to the number of standard deviations from the specialized limit to the mean. It measures the variability or spread of the data. Six Sigma is a highly structured strategy. It is a comprehensive and flexible system for achieving, sustaining, and maximizing business success. It is more about the culture than the tools and all the people who adopted quality in everything they do. It is people driving improvements based on facts and data and a detailed roadmap of process improvement. It is an initiative that extends and strengthens quality and productivity efforts. The old belief was high quality equals to high cost, but the new belief is high quality equals to low cost. You can easily understand this concept by the below analysis of cost versus quality. History of Six Sigma. Motorola developed this concept in 1987. It is basically a bunch of various quality tools. One of the most important tools of this methodology is the control chart. Control charts were developed way back in 1924 by quality guru Walter A. Schuert. Bill Smith of Motorola is considered to be the father of Six Sigma. Mikkel Harry was also the co-founder, and he was sometimes referred to as the father of Six Sigma. Motorola was the first company to receive the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award in the year 1988. Looking at the success of Six Sigma at Motorola a number of other companies, such as General Electric, Dow Chemical, DuPont, Honeywell, and Whirlpool adopted this tool. These are some of the early adopters. By adopting this method, many companies have improved their operation, reduced their defects level, and made their customers satisfied. Jack Welch of General Electric has made Six Sigma more popular around the world. In General Electric, employee promotions were depending on whether the employee had a specific Six Sigma belt or not. Milestones 1986 Six Sigma formulated by Bill Smith in Motorola. 1988 Motorola becomes the first company to win the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. 1993 Allied Signal, now Honeywell, adopted this methodology. 1995 General Electric launched the Six Sigma initiative. 1998 Honeywell adopted this method. Benefits of Six Sigma implementation. This project improves the capability of their business. It increases performance and decreases in variation. Decrease the defect generation. Improve the profit of the organization. This project improves employee morale and motivation. It improves in quality of products and customer satisfaction. Using the Six Sigma methodology, an organization can develop a strategy and implement proper action for revenue and increase cost reduction and improvements. Six Sigma methodology helps management to create a vision of the organization. It helps to set the benchmark and after sustaining and maintaining the benchmark further, improves the benchmark this methodology, helps us to continuously improve the system. By Six Sigma methodology, organizations can set a goal and guide the team to work towards achieving it. It calculates the process performance using its own unit known as Sigma unit like our performance is 4 Sigma, 5 Sigma, etc. It is a robust methodology for problem solving and improvement. What is the concept of Six Sigma? It can be understood in three different approaches. Number one, methodology approach. DMAIC methodology used for the improvement project. DMAIC is a structured problem solving roadmap and tools. Number two, philosophy approach. Reduce variation in your process and take customer focused, data driven decisions. Number three, metric approach. 3.4 defects per million opportunities. DPMO allows you to take the complexity of the product or process into account. Rule of thumb is to consider at least three opportunities for a physical part or component, one for form, one for fit, and one for function, in the absence of better considerations. What are the Six Sigma principles? Reduce the variation, maintain, 
and improve the process at the specified mean. Eliminating the defects and wastes. Increase customer satisfaction. Increase productivity and profitability. Why is it called Six Sigma? How many multiple standard deviations fit within each side of the specification limit is the sigma level of the process. The concept of mean, central tendency, and standard deviation is the most important to understand the concept of Six Sigma. Mean, it is the arithmetic average of a process data set. Central tendency, it is the tendency of data to be around this mean or average value. Standard deviation, sigma, it's a measure of variation. Higher standard deviation means the value of the data set spread in a wide range. Lower standard deviation means the values of data are near the mean. If the value of sigma is lower, then we can fix more sigma between the process average and specification limit, so the higher sigma level is good. There are two types of specification limits, lower specification limit, LSL, and upper specification limit, USL. Simply, we can say that the specification limit is the minimum and maximum acceptable limits of the customer's requirement. Sigma is the capability of the process. Higher the sigma level means to lower the defects, and lower the sigma level means higher the defect. Sigma level versus DPMO, defects per million opportunities, versus yield percentage. You can easily understand the comparison of sigma level with DPMO and yield percentage from the below picture. From this table, we can easily say that as the sigma level increase, the defects decrease. For example, in the four sigma process, the defects are 6,210 per million opportunities, and for five sigma, the defects are 230 per million opportunities, and for six sigma, the defects are 3.4 per million opportunities. So, moving forward with the main question, how good is good enough? 99.9% .9 is already very good. But what could happen at a quality level of 99.9%, that is, 1,000 parts per million? Examples. One wrong drug prescription per 1,000 prescriptions. One brake fail per 1,000 newly manufactured car slash bike. One airbag does not open per 1,000 car. One airplane crash per 1,000 ride. One student fail per 1,000 student. One person reaches late at theater per 1,000 person. So, to avoid this kind of situation, we have to be more accurate and precise. We can easily understand the difference between the two processes by referring to this picture. Three Sigma process spends 15 to 20% of sales dollars on cost of failure, whereas Six Sigma process spends 5% of sales dollars on cost of failure. Three Sigma process relies on inspection to find defects, whereas Six Sigma process relies on capable process that don't produce defects. Three Sigma process does not have a disciplined approach to gather and analyze data, whereas Six Sigma process use design, measure, analyze, improve, and control approach. Three Sigma process benchmarks themselves against their competition, whereas Six Sigma process benchmarks themselves against the best in the world. Three Sigma process believes 99% is good enough, whereas Six Sigma process believes 99% is unacceptable. Three Sigma process defines CTQs internally, whereas Six Sigma process defines CTQs externally.